Hi folks, it's good to be with you. <clears throat> I'm going to have to go in about 10 minutes, load up the car and, and get going doing evangelism. And I wanted to share two scriptures and the next scripture I want to share is Philippians chapter 1. <clears throat> Don't forget my website jasonburnspreacher.com. You can see my Twitter and Facebook as well. Philippians chapter 1. Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you, peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. I always in every prayer of mine for you all make and request with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it's meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defence and confirmation of the gospel, you are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you, all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. For this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in dull judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offence till the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. But I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace, in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love knowing that I am set for the defence of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, ye, and will rejoice. For I know that this will turn out to my salvation, through your prayer and the su supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Um, just wondering where my notes are. I had some notes, but it doesn't matter. You go to uh, verse 1, Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ. The word servant there is, you know, the slave of God, that we're slaves of God, we're living for God. And it's often used in reference to servants of God, but so, so have you noticed it says servants of Jesus Christ, so the fact that that word servants is often used in the context of God, servants of God, now it's servants of Jesus Christ, it's a hint to the deity of Christ. The word Jesus means saviour, Christ means anointed. To all the saints, saints is plural, we're part of a family. In Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, bishops is elders. Verse 2, grace be, undeserved mercy be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you is a man of prayer. Verse 4, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy. So he's a man of prayer and he's praying for people and he's a man full of joy. Even though he's in prison, he's full of joy. The word joy, if you if you wanted to understand how you have joy, J-O-Y, Jesus, others, yourself. Joy, Jesus, others, yourself. That's how you get joy. You put Jesus first, others first, than yourself. Verse 5, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. So the sharing in the ministry of the work, that you know we're part of a family as we share the work together. Verse 6, being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So it's com God starts the grace in us, it's not us, it's God that starts the grace. But if you was to look at uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse uh, 8, 9, and 10, it says we're saved by grace in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, 9, and 10. We're saved by grace, but we're saved in verse 10 to, unto good works. So God starts the grace in us, 
But we've got to work that grace out practically in our lives. For God is my record, verse 7, even as it's meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in, in the defence of the confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of my grace. So he's got a heart for these people. He's praying for these people. He loves these people. Verse 8, For God is my record, how greatly I long after you in the bowels of Jesus Christ. So he's a person that's praying for people, loves people. Go back to verse 6. Notice at the end of verse 6, we're using the King James. It says, until the day of Jesus Christ. The day of is often used of God. It's often said in the Old Testament, the day of the Lord. So here it says, until the day of Jesus Christ. So that switch from the Old Testament to the New, from God to Jesus Christ, is a reference to the deity of Christ. The day of the Lord in the Old Testament, now it's the day of Jesus Christ. Verse 9. And this I pray that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. We're to grow in love. Okay. Uh, Nabil Qureshi, when he was dying, a Christian apology, he said, let your ministry be done in love. But it's not a wishy-washy love. It's a love based on the word of God. In knowledge and in all judgment. Verse 10. That you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere without offense, till the day of Christ. Again, reference to the deity of Christ. Verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God, but to live for the glory of God. Verse 12, but I would should, you should understand, brethren, that the things that which have happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. He's in prison. And he's saying this is working out for the good. Verse 13, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. So he's in prison, but the message of the gospel is going out to Caesar's palace. It's going out to the Roman guard. Verse 14, and many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So it's inspired Christians to preach. <coughs> how does Christianity thrive and how does Christianity die? Christianity dies when you give the Christians everything they want, when you give them uh, seats in Parliament, when you give, like in the House of Lords, you have all these bishops that they have their seats, and you give them the seats in the House of Lords, and, and Christianity dies because they, they become part of the status quo and they, they become fat on, 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 on the riches of the state and they just don't have that cutting edge anymore. So Christianity dies when... when uh, the world gives what Christians want, okay? Give them power, give them notoriety, give them whatever they want, and, and just buy them off, as it were. But Christianity thrives under persecution, and Paul's being persecuted, but the gospel's thriving. And uh, many of the brethren in the Lord, yeah, verse 15, Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely opposing to what affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defence of the gospel. So while he's in prison, there are different people preaching, but they have false motives, many of them. But Paul says, I'm not bothered. So long as they're preaching the gospel, then it's okay. I, I, as long as the gospel's going out, I'm happy. And uh, the health and wealth gospel is not the gospel, true gospel. So that's different. That's a false gospel. But whenever there's people preaching with false motives, but they're preaching the gospel, don't be worried about it. At least the gospel's going out. That's what Paul's saying here. Verse 19, For this I know that it will turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed Sorry, I've got an itchy nose. But with all boldness, as always, so what now? Also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Verse 21, for to me to live is Christ, to die is gain. So we come to the end. Paul's uh, life was totally one of focusing on Christ and others. Remember the word joy. J-O-Y. Jesus, others, yourself. And Paul says, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And, and, he, and, he, and he, he doesn't want to die out of selfishness. He wants to die so that he's with Christ, for Christ's sake. You know? 
And if he lives, he wants to live for others. He wants so that he can help other people. It's a great, great encouragement there. That we can be lifted out of our discouragement. We can be lifted out of our despondency, out of our frustrations. By focusing and loving Christ. Being in love with him. Can help us to overcome our problems. Because we're focusing now not on ourselves, but upon him. And then when we've done that, when we're focused on Christ, we begin to focus on others. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Alright? So I hope that's a blessing to you. Don't forget my website, jasonbirdspreacher.com and, uh, and for those who are theologians out there, I'm going to recommend... I'm going to recommend... Um, a book or two I'm going to recommend a couple of books here uh, sorry about this so I've recommended this one before Thomas Watson All Things For Good Banner Truth Puritan Paperback it's only a few pounds but order it from your local bookshop and uh, it will really encourage you really helpful book um, beautiful writer Thomas Watson is a beautiful writer uh, the shorter catechism explained from scripture is a wonderful book uh, it's just basic Christian teaching and theology but it's so scriptural and so wonderful uh, it, it really is a, so that's the Puritan paperback Banner Truth the shorter catechism explained from scripture Banner of Truth, yeah. Always remember, Banner Truth books are worth their weight in gold. Uh, another good book for those who are preachers, uh, The Doctrine of Justification uh, by Buchanan. The Doctrine of Justification by Buchanan, um, published by the Banner of Truth, goes into the history of the Doctrine of Justification and um, yeah and and then the scriptures of what the scriptures teach about doctrine of justification really helpful for preachers this uh, there's a lot of writings done the last 10 15 years on Pauline theology and there's new perspectives on Pauline theology and some of its dangerous stuff but even evangelicals and reformed have, have taken it on board so you need to go back to some better books, some better literature, and, and that will help you. Okay. Um, this book, The Kingdom and the Cults by Walter Martin, is a really good resource book for Christians on the cults. It looks at Jehovah's Witnesses, it looks at Latter-day Mormons, Mormons, Christian Science, Worldwide Church of God, Unity School, Christianity, Buddhism. Uh, it's a really, really good book to to have as a resource uh, for references and to read, especially if you're doing evangelism and you're going out doing evangelism. Excellent book to get on that. Okay. One of my favourite writers uh, is Commentaries by Banner Truth, Charles Hodge. Get hold of a copy of that. Uh, for most Christians, I'm coming, I'm coming. Are you alright? Okay. Alright, God bless you. It's just uh, somebody's going out. So, Ephesians by uh, Charles Hodge is really, really good. Uh, I love Charles Hodge. But that's really good, man of truth. Uh, for preachers and Christians, uh, generally, if you just want to read good commentaries that you know sound, that's very helpful. And uh, then these, I've only read bits of uh, Sherlock in over the years, but I've, I have had on my reading list over the years, I've wanted to read these books uh, by The Existence and Attributes of God, Volume 1 and 2 by Sherlock Baker, and also you can get them from Banner Truth. Sherlock. I think it's Stephen Sharnock, is it? Yeah, Stephen Sharnock. 
Uh, the Existence and Attributes of God, Volume 1 and 2 by Baker. A Puritan writer. I've always wanted to read these. Somebody's given me and uh, so I'm really delighted about that. And so I've just started to dip into it a little bit. But I'd encourage you to get hold of uh, these two volumes. And um, they're worth the weight in gold. And they'll really enrich your life. Especially if you're preaching, uh, you'll be really blessed. And uh, I think, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I need to just recommend this book as well. Uh, Body of Divinity by uh, Thomas Watson, Puritan paperback, uh, published by Banner Truth. Uh, Body of Divinity by Thomas Watson. It's with its weight in gold, and I'd encourage you to get hold of a copy of that. If you're a young Christian, old Christian, get hold of a copy. You will be blessed. Okay? God bless you, and take care. So, so <clears throat> God bless you, and I hope that was a blessing to you. And uh, so I'm just going to pray, and then I've got a full day of evangelism, God willing. Lord, I just thank you for this day. Thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your encouragement. And we just pray that you be with us today. Pray that you bless, Lord, for your glory. May we know your love. May we know your grace. May we know your joy. May we know your peace. May we know your blessings. May we know your help. May we know... Your strength today, we ask this, Lord, in your name. Bless each one of us today uh, and be with us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all and I uh, hope you uh, have a good day today and God bless you. Take care.